Boy, you are such a hazard. It's a bad. Look at him spilling stuff on the table. What's Mitch Ween going to say when he sees the mess you're making there, Mitch Lewis? God. You're worse than Jerry Lee Lewis. By the way, save me one more of those, okay, or I'm going to have to throw a real fit in here because I have never seen such carrying on. D look at that. This one's almost empty already. You people are a bunch of hosers in here, okay? That's pig to all you goyim. Thank you, Andy. Look at that. We got four Jews all in here in the same room. Boy, I feel so much more comfortable now. All we need is Robbie Benson. Twelve minutes past eleven. At the, what is he, like twelve now? Do is he ever going to grow up or what? Has he got one of those, like, prepubic diseases where he looks like he's 12 until the day he dies? That's kind of embarrassing, isn't it? Anyway, you want a great attention. What is, uh, look at that. Yvette just gave a look in here like, oh, am I missing something? Well, I got news for you, honey. There's only two slices left, so don't think about it. Too. Don't scratch your head. There's only two left. What? What does that mean? Oh, she's going over there. You don't have to worry about it. I'll have all the pizza in the world for us over there. She's going over to uh, Florida. I object! Mr. Kennedy! Yes. The trial hasn't begun yet. Oh, right. I knew that. Now, in the matter of... Move for a mistrial! Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Kennedy, sit down! Sorry. Now, Counselor, do you have your briefs with you? Uh, Your Honor, please the court. I am not wearing any underwear. Please! Mr. Kennedy, are you prepared to give your opening statement to the jury? Uh, yeah, okay. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure my guy didn't do it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Foreman, do you have a question? Yes, uh, we've reached a verdict, Your Honor. But we haven't heard any evidence yet. Oh, that's okay. We find Mr. Kennedy not intelligent. Oh. But very good looking. <laughs> Eleven eighteen at WIOD. There's salad, there's pizza, just everybody uh, have a great time. Boy, I've never seen such a psychosis. Was that fast or what? I'm not talking about you. Do I have to go through this mood thing with you every day, Cheryl? Just take the goddamn pizza and cut the crap. Anyway, we hope you're having a nice day. Every day she comes in here with this mood, and if you don't look at her just right, she's like moody and looking like... I think her mom ought to slap the crap out of her, okay? It's too late. If I was your son, I'd run away from home. <clears throat> anyway, let's take a call. <clears throat> now, how could North Miami be on one? W-I-O-D, you're not in North Miami, are you? No. Of course not. In Homestead. Well, you'd rather be in North Miami, though, wouldn't you? Probably. Be honest with me. I will. Okay. Do you ever um, get a chance to see Santa Barbara? Um, maybe a few minutes here and there over the years. Well, you know who was in there last week? Kelly Craig. Kelly Craig from Channel 4 News? Yes, sir. Are you serial? Yeah, she played a nurse for a couple of days. You mean it was like uh, current, like she's doing it now? Like, it was. It showed, well, I don't know how long ago they filmed it, but it showed about, I'd say about a week and a half ago. Incredible. Isn't that funny? We better check that out. You do that. I love Kelly Craig. I know, that's why I call her. She's uh, cute as a bug, and she can read the news, and she's great. And she's effervescent and excellent, although I will say at 6 o'clock, <laughs> I do turn over to Channel 6 and watch uh, Giselle and John. Oh, I like Channel 6. Yeah. So, well, I'm the only thing is my set kind of like vibrates when Dave Game comes on. <laughs> the whole set starts shaking and tilting and uh, trying to adjust, you know, center the picture. It's impossible. Oh, you know what he reminded me of? Um, did you watch that movie, The Big One? The Big One. The Big One? Yeah. Oh, that John Holmes movie. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, every, that, that news reporter guy. Every time he came on the, on the phone, I mean on the phone, on the television, I get thinking, oh, there's channel. Channel, channel 6. Channel 7 or Channel 6 or... Whatever it is. Yeah. Oh, he was terrible. Well, listen, have a wonderful day. Well, you too. And a great life. And have a nice afternoon. And thanks for the memories. All righty, bye-bye. See you. 21 after 11. Now, is this Bill Tanner? So we went from a 3-3 three, three or a 3-5 to a 3 We have an open line in Palm Beach. Now, that's just pathetic, isn't it? That Mr. G... I hope somebody goes up there and takes their laundry and wraps it around his neck. In fact, that's one of the things they did in this movie, Mortal Passion. After they killed this, uh, the wife's boyfriend, they stuffed him in a big um, plastic garbage bag. And they buried him under the backyard, under the uh, thing. 
certainly something to think about, Mr. G. We have an open line at Broward. Look at that. 5-2-4. We're all dead up here, but spring break's coming back. Isn't that a laugh? I keep reading these articles in the Sun Sentinel now every day about that. They, they, well, now maybe it wasn't such a good idea to get rid of those kids. Let's bring them back. We really like you, you know? Yeah, that's what this town always does. They chase everybody out. They have no alternative, no game plan. All they know is they don't like whoever is here. How come they don't chase the damn Canadians out, the French Canadians? The only thing they bring us here is like uh, heartburn. They don't spend a damn dime. They clog up the road. They run around speaking. They sound like they're constipated for life. Get rid of them. But now they think the kids are going to come flocking back to beautiful Fort Lauderdale so they can see all those 150-year-old people out there with their rockers and their walkers, okay? Get serious. Ah. Here's a mobile on the star line. Parlez-vous français? Si, oui. <laughs> si, oui. We got 595 and Davey doing the median right here. Hello, boys. Okay. You know who that was, don't you? He's starting to get on my nerves again, too. Now, that was Woody. You're getting on my nerves again, Woody. You're okay like once a week, but you're out of control. What is wrong with these chronics? What is their problem? They need a mental institution for chronics like Mr. G and Woody. Mr. G, he wouldn't even, once a year would be good for him. But what is the problem with these people that just can't put a lid on it? Market is up 13 points. Look at that. I'd go out and start buying like crazy. WYOD, George is psychotic. How you doing? Okay. I'm calling from the airport on a mobile. Just got back into town. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I want to talk to Neil. You're speaking to Neil, sir. Get with it. Hi, how you Take doing, Take a couple Neil? of doggy uppers and get with the program. <laughs> Come on. Hey, jet lag, Neil. Go just on. came in from New York. Yeah, that's what uh, Weeb Eubank had. Yeah, you know, your friend Howard Stern mentioned you yesterday. Yeah, I'll bet. No, he said Howard that... Stern don't know me from uh, Mushy Pupik, okay? No, he did mention you. He said you're one of the better talents. And he no, has... Howard said that? He has Sir, name, come you know. on. Not Howie would never say that. Howie he hates me like it. poison. Howie and Robin both said it. Really? Really. Maybe was... I could do middays on K-Rock. That I was would on be my great. way to the cemetery yesterday, and I had him tuned in, and that was it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I always liked Howie a lot, you know, especially his hair. I'd like to just run my fingers through his hair. He looks like that guy in, uh, the, what is it, Twisted Sister? Twisted Schwester, yeah. <laughs> anyway, wish me a happy birthday, Neil. Just got back into town. Happy birthday, sir. Thank you. I'm going to cheer did, up a little bit. I am. Howie did say that about you. Well, that's great. You must be going through change of life. Okay, now you take care, man. See ya. Bye. Wow. Howard Stern and Dick Summer. And Dick Purton, all the major talent in America, loves the Neil Rogers show, okay? But you know the one that I'm proudest of, of all of those people in America, the one that I'm proudest who loves this show? Hi, this is Larry King, and they don't come any better than Neil Rogers. My number one fan loves me. But don't get too close, Larry. Do you know that they said on uh, CNN yesterday they were doing the story about his latest uh, breakup and his impending divorce? They said that this is his sixth wife. Six. You know what Angie Dickinson said? She said, if you close your eyes and take a lot of Valium, Larry's not so bad. Especially if it kicks in just at the right time. It's 1130. No, seriously, stop and think about it. I mean, let's face it. Most of us are not uh, beauty pods, okay? But just imagine waking up next to that, to a lump of uh, skin and bones. With that big thing sticking up under the cover. And then, of course, uh, she pulls it up and much to her chagrin, it's his nose. Here's a payphone in Fort Lauderdale. Hey, Neil. Yeah. I got a beauty for you. I got an excellent pick report from these douchebags down in Miami. You ready for this one? Okay. I go down to get a Dallas ticket for tonight for the heat game. I'm coming down A Street, and I run a red light like an asshole. <clears throat> yeah. This cop pulls me over. I don't blame him. He should have thrown your ass in a slammer, put you in Rayford. Well, that's just Right in the chair, pal. Out. Okay, so listen. Yeah. He's standing behind my car. He's writing a ticket up. And you notice about maybe 10, 15 minutes ago before when you were uh, yelling and screaming about the girl wanting to eat the pizza and the kids should run away from her, all this other crap. He should. Okay. He says, I want you to turn that radio off right now. That, obs that obscene bastard right there I don't want to listen to. I said, hey, pal, go back and stand at your car and write the ticket. I'm listening that obscene, to the radio I want to listen to. Wait a minute. To. He called me an obscene bastard? A bastard. A bastard, <coughs> man. You believe the bastard he said?
good. How old was he, 110? Uh, a Cuban guy, about maybe 30 years old. Oh, uh, yeah. This well, I guy. got your bastard right over here, pal, okay? It's right under your badge. He says, I don't I don't want to be a... Be a what, let me think exactly how he said. This guy is obscene, he's a bastard, and I don't want to have my time wasted to listen to him. I said, look, you're giving me... Time to go listen to his own radio. Time uh -huh. to turn on Radio Memories. It's right up... Time to turn on La, La Cubanissima. That's right up his alley. Well, I turned it up just a little bit louder, and he uh, kind of threatened <laughs> me. He said, you know, are you trying to... Uh, trying to threaten me here he says are you trying to challenge me i said i'm not trying to challenge you at all i said you're writing me a ticket i'm listening to my car exactly you want to listen to the damn show you don't want to hear his crap i still got a 30 dollar ticket good for him i can't even read his name i wish i could because i'd let you play. he probably knows joe carroyo so you better watch it pal uh, i'm lucky i got out of there anyways i thought you'd just like to have a little information about those lovely pigs down in south dade those metro <laughs> bastards let me just tell you i want to tell you a little story okay you know, we do a spot for LoJack, which I've been doing LoJack for years now, since they first came into Florida, and I really believe in it. It's a great, great uh, invention, and it works, and it's just uh, tremendous, okay? And we do a good job for them on this show. Mm -hmm. And I joke around with this thing with the pig reports and the pig patrol, and in a spot, I'll say, uh, you know, it helps the pigs get your car back. And some jackass from one of the sheriff's department, probably the BSO, but I don't know where, called him up there whining about it the other day, okay, because I used the word pig. Now, let me ask, ask you a question. You know that charity football game that they play every year? What do they call that? It's called the Pig Bowl. And who came up with that name? Did I come up with it or did they do it themselves, okay? Well, you know, it's yeah, so if they say the Pig Bowl, it's okay. But if I say the pigs, then right away and I'm, I'm an obscene bastard or whatever he said, okay? I hope his guacamole melts on his thing, okay? I hope he gets four flats and has to walk back to the station after yeah. the radio breaks. How's right. That? And, and Outstanding. His hooks, and his hoofs and his ears drag all the way and burn on the side. And runs into Dave Game in the middle of the highway. Unbelievable. Have I a, thought you'd get a charge out of it, though. But anyways, uh, where's, the, uh, where's the remote today? Where, We're where, not doing a remote. I know it's not a remote, but where is the pizza Flora's. Place? It's on 79th Street, just two blocks east of Biscayne. Can you handle that? I think I can. Hey, Neil, you, you, you do a great job, and I enjoy listening to you. In fact, I turned on a police dispatchers. I work over in Fort Lauderdale, and they all work <laughs> over there. And anyways, I thought you'd enjoy it, so have a good one. Okay, okay. tell him to put a lid on it. Thank you, buddy. See ya. Obscene bastard indeed, okay? Boy, we still have... I, th see, I can understand that from 75 and 80-year-old Cubans who are still, uh, you know, screaming about Muriel. If you had any idea, if I had $10 for every Cuban who listens to this show, I could buy Cuba and send Fidel back to uh, wherever the hell he came from. Where did he come from? Hunger? Siberia? Say, kids, what's real bad for you but tastes real good? Shut up! And what gives you the excess energy to drive mom crazy? Shut up! So, what breakfast cereal will you tell mom to buy next time she goes shopping? Sugar Shockers! Yeah! New super sugar-coated Sugar Shockers are little bits of raw cane drenched in honey and coated with powdered sugar, glucose, fructose, corn syrup, and other natural sweeteners. And it tastes good! Right, because there's no yucky vitamins or minerals to spoil your fun. Yeah! And how does it make you feel? Like I'm vibrating. Ooh. Mommy, let's watch cartoons. Mommy, let's go get ice cream. Mommy, let's play Smurfs. Mommy, 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 mommy. And moms will love sugar shockers, too, because inside every box, there's a free bottle of new Flintstones chewable Valium. Yeah! So try new super sugar-coated sugar shockers from your friends at Irresponsible Foods. I have no life. 11.40. 20 till noon at WYOD. There's an open line in Broward, 524. Now, listen, in 20 minutes, Dick and Dud will be over at Flora's, which is right up the street, 79th Street. Why do people keep asking? I've explained it over and over. This is not a hard place to find, okay? If you're coming from, like, on the beach... You come on the 79th Street Causeway, you come west, and then the road, kind of like there's a fork. When you get on the other side of the bridge, there's a fork in the road. Pick it up and uh, stuff it in your nose. Now, there's a fork in that road. Don't go to the right, because that goes off to 82nd Street, which is a nice way to go home from here to get to I-95, because 79th Street, when you get west of Biscayne, is the worst street in all of South Florida. All the people on 79th Street are on drugs, okay, or on something, because they drive like their finger is uh, somewhere. The worst. Every jalopy, every maniac, every douchebag. Anyway, 
79th Street. It's on the right-hand side as you're going west. It's on the left-hand side as you're going east. It's on the north side of 79th Street, a couple of blocks east of Biscayne Boulevard. Flores, it's green with a red sign. It's outdoors. There's benches. There's parking spaces. That's Flores. Got it? It's like the other day. We're like two blocks south of Gulfstream Park at the Specs last Wednesday, and you still had people, oh, they're getting lost. They don't know how to... How hard is it when you say I'm at Biscayne and 208 or whatever it was? How hard is it? And that's one thing we'll be checking on this afternoon. So anyway, they'll be over there from noon to 2, and uh, we've got the unbelievable T-shirts, the incredible ones that are just uh, from Captured Glory, would make all our T-shirts, and the Rick and Suds... Uh, snooze cruise t-shirts one of which i'm modeling myself right now uh. and uh those are 20 bucks a piece we'll have them in sizes no less i mean we really have this thing uh, under control and the uh, best neil cassette tapes which are 20 bucks now joe at Flo uh. flores well boy that lunch was great uh, if you buy two slices of pizza sodas are free if you buy some of our stuff if you donate and uh, at the end of the noon to four segment, he's going to donate 20% of all the money he takes in during those four hours to Camilla's house. And when I get over there shortly after two, we will, uh, everybody be sure when you buy any of this stuff and make your donation. Are we going to take care of that, by the way? Have they got the entry box? Great. Boy, are we doing it today? It's incredible. Just wait till we get there. We'll screw it up good. But anyway, fill out uh, one of the entries. And don't try to stuff the ballot box because that ain't going to work. One per customer only, okay? And then uh, between two and three, I'll draw, and uh, we'll do it. We got those three pair of tickets on the 50-yard line, section 420, uh, 442, like I said. And uh, it's great, right on the 50-yard line. A little up high, you look down with that panoramic view. It'll be great. You'll feel like you're in our skybox, but thank God you won't be. It's 1143 at WIOD, Fort Lauderdale. Yes, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Great. I'd like to talk to you about two subjects that are not even related to each other. How's Bill Calder doing? Uh, he's uh, coming along. Is he? Slow, but he'll, he'll be okay. You think he's ever going to get back on the air? I sure hope so. Okay. The other question is, it's totally unrelated. Who do you think is the best baseball player that ever lived? I know that's a tough question, but I heard you talk about Ricky Henderson. The best baseball player who ever lived? I know. This is like during I'd football. say Felix Mantilla. No. Do you think Mickey Mantle could have been if he never hurt himself? Well, I know this, that. I know it's See, this, this kind of a question I is know. just. Uh, see, I was a big Mickey Mantle fan because as a kid I was a Yankee fan, and uh, you know he won a triple crown. I forget what year. Hit three sixty five and fifty four home runs, yeah, whatever it was. Yeah. And uh, he was great. He was at tremendous speed. He didn't run the bases a lot because he had bad knees, and those teams used to score 10, 12 runs a game, so they weren't a running team anyway. He didn't have to run. And a great fielder, great arm, tremendous power, switch hitter. I mean, he had everything going, and he was certainly one of the top five. Top five? Then there are those who say Willie Mays. But yeah. to try to compare athletes from one era to the next is not possible. You You're can't right. compare Ty Cobb to Brooks Robinson. You You're can't right. compare Babe Ruth to uh, Henry Aaron or uh, Willie Mays or Mickey Mantle or Lou Gehrig to um, uh, any of these, to Willie Stargell. Yeah, yeah. Well, Neil, I think you're the best broadcaster. You can't compare Dick Grote to, uh, say, um, Sean Dunstan. Dr. Strangelove. Right. Neil, you're the best broadcaster that has ever been on the air. No question Barn about Hunt. it. That's um, what they're all saying now. Uh, believe me. If people in South Florida ever believe that, we'd really have a show. People in South Florida don't know anything. They don't know their ass from their yeah. elbow, and including that pig cop out there who's making all kinds of grotesque comments about the show. I hope he sticks his burrito where the moon don't shine, okay? Exactly. Go Corning. Go Corning. Okay. All right, Neil. See ya. There's a guy from the Glassworks. Market's up almost 12 points. What the hell do you want? Nothing's perfect. And so anyway, Dick and Dud will be over there from noon to two, and uh, we do have the cellular phone over there. Marvin is there. Ileana is there. If you want to make a date, she's been trying to peddle me that Cuba. She's a very nice young lady, by the way. She really is, in spite of all the uh, people here trying to hit up on her. But she's a really nice person. But she's been trying to peddle me that Cuban coffee. I'm sorry, okay? I can. I have an iron stomach, but that stuff is like, it's like taking acid from your battery and just swigging it down, man. You've got to be nuts. And you wonder why some of those people get so emotional and temperamental. Man, if you were drinking that stuff, you'd be like doing a Mexican hat dance all day long. You'd be like on sugar shockers 24 hours a day. George likes it because uh, he grew up in Havana. Little Havana. 
1146 at WIOD. I don't know where you grew up. It doesn't make any difference. Maybe he wants to rode a bus through Hialeah. Who the hell cares? See, people don't listen. They hear stereotypes. People say, oh, the Neil Rogers show is shock radio. It's boring. It's vulgar. It's disgusting. He's in love. What was the word? A crude uh, something bastard. The bastard part's right, but the other part offends me bitterly. But then when you listen, not once, but for a few days, because once you, it's like a soap opera. You have to, you can't come in in the middle and expect to know what's going on. You listen for a few days, and all of a sudden you say, hey, I'm having a few laughs and not such a bad time. It isn't really so bad, right? It only hurts when they stop. And now, Language Lab, the show that teaches you a foreign language in less than 60 seconds. Today's lesson, Greek. Lesson one, strawberry pie. Strawberry pie. Lesson two, apple pie. Apple pie. Lesson three, pumpkin pie. Punky pie. Customer, what kind of pie do you have? Answer. Apple pie, strawberry, and punky. Language Lab is a public service that may not be copied or authorized for resale. Thank you. Okay, now let me ask you something. If you gave the Nelson twins a big haircut and you took all that hair and you put it inside of one of those crusts and you put it in the oven, what kind of a pie would that be? 1154 at WIOD, we have an open line in Broward. Well, think about it for two seconds. 524 WIOD. <laughs> Okay, we're trying to pick up uh, FTL. We're having a little bit of difficulty. Uh, let's go to Plantation. Hello. Hi. First time caller in Plantation. Great. Wanted to say hello and tell you that I think your show is great. It's incredible, isn't it? Yes, it is. More fun than a barrel of monkey do. And I wanted to ask you a huge favor. Okay, whatever you want, because you're so nice, or at least you're pretending to be anyway. Well, could you please play your Casey Kasem show and your America's Funniest Accidents? Both? Well, whichever you choose. Well, which KC are you talking about? You don't mean that one with the George Michael and a monkey on his back again, do you? Well, I love that one, but you can play the other one, too. I'd rather play KC because it's great and it uh, kills a lot of time. Okay, also? Have you ever tried picking up FTL, by the way? Uh, no, I haven't. We're working on it. Okay, now what was the other thing? I'd like to call Kurt Aponovich in Plantation a major douchebag. Okay. And I'd like to say thank you to my boss, Barbara Sugarman, for letting me stay on the line so Barbara long. Sugarman? Yes. Oy vey. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you very much. See ya. Bye. Wow. Wow. Two open lines at Broward. Well, see, they know I'm going to play that. That's why somebody dropped off. Well, I got news for you. If you've got something important to do in this town, God bless you. I'm Casey Kissam coming to you live from Hollywood with another edition of America's Bottom 40. Brought to you by the Oxy 5 Company's newest acne medication, Oxymoron 5, for pimple-free teenagers. <laughs> and so it goes. <laughs> you have to be a little quicker on the tape, boys. <laughs> That's a good joke. We've got the worst songs in America, and we're counting them down. Record stores are selling them. For some unknown reason, you're buying them, and I'm using them as coasters. First, let's review the top three songs on the charts. At number three, Guns N' Roses is singing Sweet Child of Mine. Well, if I had a child around the house today, I'd have these four words for lead guitarist Slash and his cohorts. Stay the hell away. <laughs> At number two, Huey Lewis says, There ain't no living in a perfect world. And especially not for you, Huey, since you don't speak proper English. <laughs> and at number one, George Michael sings, he's got a monkey on his back. Well, I would imagine it's getting a little crowded back there, George. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, you probably don't mind. <laughs> and by the way, George, there are these remarkable shaving instruments called razors. Buy one and lose that silly ass earring. <laughs> on the charts. The band Johnny Hates Jazz with I Want to Be a Hero is moving down on the charts, and deservedly so. <laughs> Apparently, Johnny also hates music. <laughs> I don't think hero status is eminent, Johnny, so get a real job. And there is a song I like, Rod Stewart's newest release, Forever Young. 
And for a moment, I thought it was a song about me, Forever Hung. (laughs) (laughs) And now it's time for a long-distance dedication. It comes to us from a listener in Pasadena, California, who writes, Dear Casey, I'm 16 years old, president of my class. I'm 6'2". I have blonde hair, weigh 175 pounds, and stars quarterback for my high school team. But, Casey, I have a problem. The girls simply will not leave me alone. It seems as though all they want me for is my good looks, my excellent physique. Why can't they just like me as a friend, treat me as a person instead of some sex object, and quit hitting upon me all the time? Casey, do you have any suggestions? Signed, Todd. Well, here's my answer. Dear Flaming Homer. (laughs) Okay, 1158. At WYOD, Kelly Craig is going to be singing the national anthem prior to the heat game at the arena tonight. Kelly Craig is also on Santa Barbara. She's also on the news on Channel 4. She is everywhere. For a little squirt, she still gets around. And you know what we say here at WYOD, there's nothing like a little squirt. Oh, it's news time already? Okay, we have one open line in Dade, 751. And we expect you to fill it, too, with anything you like. 751-WYOD. And in Palm Beach, 655-WYOD. When we come back after the news, Rick and Dud will be over there at Flora's. We'll get a little update on the phone. You know, retirement just wasn't my style, so I began working nights down here as a janitor in this old office building. Yeah. <laughs> just to keep busy, I guess, because it pays below minimum wage. But anyway, oh, hey, there's the big cheese now. Rick, how you doing tonight? Hey, working kind uh, of late, aren't you? How are you doing? Yeah, having a pretty tough night. Yeah, well, <sighs> good night. Night. Yeah, you're going to watch it. Gonna watch the game tonight? Yeah, I'm headed across the street. Free pizza, beer night over there. I've had a pretty tough day. I thought I'd just uh, watch the game with the fellas over at the bar. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm just gonna listen to it on this old radio here. The antenna's kind of shaky. I'm looking at a big it. screen color TV over there. It's the uh, best picture oh, I've ever right? seen. Yeah, oh, big geez. screen color. Great picture. <laughs> I heard it is. Well, I'd sure like to be there. Well, you know, I got all my work done. And... Oh, really? You're, yes. you're all done? Yeah, you suppose maybe I could... Well, I'll tell you what, uh... Maybe I well, could I got up. my BMW in the garage. I got a Blahputnik radio in there. I can pick up the you can drive me anything. Up. No, no. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll give you my car keys. Why don't you clean out my car? I got a wicked clean stand it. in the back seat. Yeah, I've got some stuff <laughs> in the trunk and clean it up with. Uh, Simon it. I'll be back in about two hours, and I'll, maybe I'll bring you a piece of pizza. Okay, Dad? Well, Dad, listen, thanks a lot. I hear my keys, and uh, be careful not to scratch the car. And I'll be back in about two hours. Two okay? hours? Your yeah, i gotta watch, I got to watch You're the not going to bring... Why, you ungrateful... You, Esther said you were a worthless... Second son of a... <laughs> Hell, you, you can't be my son. Nobody's that ungrateful. You <laughs> breath. <laughs> I'll take your stained BMW and run that mother <laughs> right into the damn river. You, you worth nothing son gets of someone's a attention like a good dog. string of profanities. <laughs> Pig faced. This message brought to you by the National Cursing Foundation. <laughs> and remember our motto go f- yourself. <laughs> get it in? Okay, we're trying to pick up the Mike Roberts show. 1208 at WYOD. Look at that board, boy. Three hot calls on that board right now. Did I predict it or not? Do I know this crowd like a book? Like a map? Now, when are they going to call in from over at Flores to give us a little lay of the land? Is that, uh, we don't want to put a lot of pressure on Rick and Dud, but it would be nice to get a little uh, foreplay before things get started. Find out if there's some people over there. If they're selling those shirts. Are we going to do pictures and the bumper stickers, too, today? Does anybody know? <laughs> Nobody's got any. We don't know what we're doing, but we're having a great time. We're raising a lot of money and uh, killing some time. Pembroke Pines. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I got some updated information for you. Okay. It's about three weeks old, though. Uh, Lou's Finer Delicatessen still there. Yeah, it's still there? Yeah. Great. They got two of them. 
They have two? Yeah. Where's the other one? Uh, it's not too far from the one you're talking about on uh, near Wyoming and yeah. McNichol. Right. On Seven Mile? That's not Mickey McNichol, is it? No. No, that's Six Mile. No, he's at, he's at Hazel Park. Right. <laughs> Keep him there. Yeah. Stick him in the uh, infield bomb. and don't what? give him a map. What happened to him? He used to be a good... Reduction. Yeah, well, uh, I don't want to go into it. All right. Mickey, you make me sick. Yeah. Make me lose my money. And that Joe Pavia, man, up in the air everywhere. <laughs> go ahead, I'm sorry. Hey, I know how we can make money. Let's open up a school. He's got, he's got more X's... Uh, on the program than they used to have in the combat zone in Boston. Okay, that's how many X's he's got on that program on every horse. <laughs> Whoop! He's in the air again. Yeah. Gotta rent him out at Eastern Airlines. Maybe it could bail themselves out. There you go. He can get you in the air for just a couple of bucks. Hey, let's sorry, open up getting... a school on how to be a Canadian. Have a great day, pal. <laughs> all right. Ten past noon at WIOD. Now what happened? They were all lit up again there momentarily, and three of them disappeared again. Well, you people are got like St. Vitus dance today, okay? You must have... Talk about having something exciting in your pants. They must have like those red fire ants all over their underwear today. You're nuts. An open line in Dade, one in Broward, and one on our star line at Star IOD, and the bat line isn't ringing yet. Are they over there? Suds, you know, Suds isn't going to be there yet. That uh, day late in the dollar shirt routine of his is getting pretty old. He's a great guy, but you know something? You can't live off that forever. Right? Is he over there? We don't know. We haven't heard a thing. Well, that's because Marvin's over there supervising. He's probably playing uh, grab this and grab that with Ileana. We know what that's all about. Miss Claire All Productions presents possibly the most important concert of our time. Sinead Aid. The benefit concert to get Sinead O'Connor some hair. Sinead Aid. Featuring John Bon Jovi, Cher, Millie Vanilli, Marge Simpson, anybody on MTV, and many, many more with hair to spare. Check your blow dryers at the door for Sinead Aid. The concert that's head and shoulders above the rest. Tickets available at finer salons everywhere. 12.15 at WID. Now, are they not going to call in? Is that it? See, I knew things were going a little too well. And how are we going to know? How are we going to be able to uh, communicate with the audience? See, well, I'm not going to go into it. Uh, for some bizarre reason, all three lines of date opened up again. There they are, finally. 751-9463, 751-WIOD, and two in Broward. Very strange day on the phone. 1207, every line on the board was lit, and all of a sudden they disappeared like the phone had St. Vitus dance. Yes, sir. Hello. What the heck happened? Calm down a little bit, will you? Oh, I thought everything went away. No, we're still here. Okay, are we on? What do you mean, are well, we on? I, I'm me, not sure where anything I can hear. Oh, my God, we well, are. Well, wait a minute. Don't they have a radio over there? Well, yeah, but I'm not near it. Yeah? <laughs> well, this is your good friend, Suds. Yeah, we know who it is. Rick's Don't start here. sucking we're around with us. You're already there? We're all... Yeah, I've no. been here for a half an hour. Yeah, right. Minutes. You're probably About calling from the car. He's called from the car. He's right. on uh, I-75 <laughs> out on his way to Naples. He's the only guy in America comes to work by way of Naples, <laughs> Italy. We've got we've got all the shirts laid out here, man. There are just tons of them. Yeah. Uh, the snooze cruise shirts, your shirts, and all the sizes. The pictures are all here, and we're set to start writing and selling. Yeah, but there are no people there yet? Yeah. Eight. What do you mean, eight? Well, there's eight, just a few people? Well, there's just a few right now. Well, what the hell is that all about? Well, I don't know. Jeez. But they I'm go through all this big... I'm uh, sure they're on their way. They better be. Oh, hold on just a minute. Hold on. This will be great. <laughs> there's no more room in the parking lot. Yeah, right. I'm serious. And we got eight people there? Well, they I don't think they know what's going on here. They're, we're in the uh, Flora's little dining room here in the screened room, and everybody is, like, milling around. They're not really sure what to do yet, and especially since it involves money. they got to, like, think about it and get counseling. What are you talking about? Well, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> the parking lot is full, but we ain't selling anything. You mean like the parking lot is full of their customers who are there to have uh, baked ziti and spaghetti and well, pizza? I Get the hell out of there. We got business to do I here. I know, exactly. And I don't, you know, I'm trying to take an inventory. Oh, uh, no. Know? You don't mean to tell me this is going to be a big bomb, do you? I'm telling you, man, the parking lot is packed. It's already packed. But we're not selling anything. That's now, uh, T-shirt Bob and Tom are here. Would you guys like to buy a shirt? Neil is speechless. <laughs> what, Kurt? 
Oh, geez. Here I am asking the evil twin something. The parking lot is full, right? Ne next, what do you mean next door? Well, they can park next door. But well, why aren't we selling any shirts or anything? Why is, like, everybody out there? And I'll tell you. You want to know why? Yes. Because they're all there for the Dolphin tickets. Well, First of all, the Dolphin tickets aren't going to happen until two, between 2 and 3. That's well, number one. And number two, unless they buy something, they can't fill out one of the little entry slips, and they aren't eligible to win them anyway. I was going to tell you, for that, it's kind of a needless trip then. Do you mean to say that this is going to be just a bomb today? Well, not yet. It's just getting started. I'm just telling you these. What do you mean it's getting land. started? If the parking lot is full and you got a bunch of drifters around there, probably the same half dozen misfits that I'm come to every remote and stand around with their finger up their nose. Well, there you go. Oh, geez. You can park next door, okay, in the Sun Plaza. Right, oh, right underneath the waxy sign. Just tip your hat. Yeah. There is. There's Stick a waxy Stick your finger sign up there. the picture of Budell on that uh, poster. There's, there is no picture. Well, there won't be when I get done with it. Mm. So that's it. So it's now, a bomb? We're here. And people are, like, milling around my car. Well, what do you mean they're milling around? They're milling. Oh, here we go. We're starting to sell. Okay. Get Let's the see. money out okay. of your pockets and your hands, too, okay? Exactly. And quit feeling the change and start buying stuff. Okay. This isn't. What are they waiting for? Are they shopping for shirts? I don't know. I'm going to have to get out here with a bullhorn and start directing. Yeah, bull is the operative word, pal. Okay. Well, we're here, and we're ready. By the way, I'm still trying. Just a second. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay. I'm trying to pick up the Mike Roberts show here. Wow, it's coming in unusually well today. Oh, wait. I heard him say F. You're getting it better than I can. I must be having problems. Wow. Okay, well, listen, give us another report in about 20 minutes, and I'm going to uh, just land, lace into these people. You they better. are slow. You better. They are slow. This Motivate. phone has been pumped. By the way, uh, Jim Jensen was excellent yesterday. Why, thank you. He was I'll, good. I'll I didn't say you were good. I said he was good. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll call him back and tell him when he wakes up. He don't even know who I am. You know, these dolphins, they pretend they don't listen to the show. Every one of those dolphins listens to this Heck, show. Heck, he doesn't. You bet he does. Does he really? He do everything you said. Sure, he listens all the time. He loves yeah. the show. Yeah, he said douchebag a couple now, of times. Now, why do you think he came on the show? In fact, he called Shula douchebag a couple of times, right. too, and he's pretty upset about it. Exactly. You should have right. heard off the air. Boy, now, I got are those we tapes. Doing, For a $1,000 donation, I got those tapes. Are we doing um, a pictures today? I hope not. Oh, Neil, nobody can move here. No, let's forget about the pictures. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I say you just buy your stuff and split. And get the hell out. Yeah, because exactly. we've got to turn these people over. Oh, Although man. the problem with that is going to be, what about the... Uh, oh, did we back ourselves into a nightmare here? You know what? What? What are we going to do about the drawing? Because they got to come back. They have to be there to win the tickets. I don't. Do you think that they should, that should be the case? They can't. They can't. Okay. Just phone numbers. We'll make sure everybody puts their phone number. Okay. Okay. Then they'll have to pick if, them up. As here. long as they make a donation, then we'll get back to them. Great. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. Okay. What a guy. Talk to you in a bit. Bye. Well, I see. We have to kind of make it up as we go along. Because I didn't. I mean, you look at the lot from the outside as you drive by, and you figure, yeah, you get a few cars in there. But quite frankly, it's not like exactly a Macy's. You know what I'm saying? But we'll work it out. So get in there, buy your stuff, fill out the uh, thing, drop it in a box, and get the hell out of there. Make room for some more people with some money. And then uh, we'll draw the names between two and three, and we'll call you. Don't call us, and uh, that's it. Okay, we have one open line in Dade, one in Broward. And get over there now, and don't uh, make us into a bunch of monkeys today. This isn't some kind of a Zeta remote, okay? They're used to it. This isn't a Power 96 fiasco. This is WIOD, your happening doing it station. So get your asses over to Flores and come loose with the cash and buy the T-shirts and the tapes and to fill out the thing and cut the crap.